Hello again, this is Logan Albright, and I'm here to talk to you today about a book I just picked up at the used bookstore, kind of on a whim, and it's called Solitude, A Return to the Self by Anthony Storr. This is a nonfiction book on psychology and philosophy, uh, which is not usually what I do on this channel, but I thought it was interesting and I thought it was worth sharing with you all. Uh, I picked it up in a used bookstore in DuPont Circle in Washington, D.C. called Second Story Books, which I've talked about before. I just saw it on the shelf and it looked like the kind of book I would enjoy. It was written in 1988 originally and is about, basically the author is talking about the overemphasis our society has put on personal relationships, intimate relationships, and the underemphasis we put on spending time alone. And solitude as a uh, important role of creativity, of thought, of inspiration. He looks at the lives of a lot of creative individuals, creative geniuses, authors, poets, musicians, composers, scientists, philosophers, and observes that a lot of their best work was done in solitude, that they needed that time to be creative and to be inspired and to reflect and to work, uh, and that a lot of them never really formed any intimate relationships in their lives. A lot of them were unmarried, they had no children, um, some of them never even had, you know, transient relationships. The, the prime example being Sir Isaac Newton, who, you know, is one of the great scientists of the modern era, never got married and was celibate his entire life. Um, and he just talks about how, starting with Freud, there is this overemphasis of the need for other people and the human being as a social animal in order to form attachments and in order to be productive and happy. And the evidence from these creative people and their lives shows that that's not necessarily the case. I was interested in this book because I'm kind of a solitary guy myself. I've been single a long time, I've lived alone a long time, and I like to be alone. I get tremendous happiness out of it. Uh, I'm an introvert, I get you know very worn down in the company of people. Although I enjoy the company of people, I need time to recharge on my own. Um, but I do feel like there's this tremendous societal pressure to form intimate relationships with others, to have close friendships, to always be out at parties, socializing, to not want to spend time by yourself, to date a lot. And people who don't do that are considered a little bit weird. And so I was gratified to find this, this alternate theory where he says that while relationships are important and you do need them in your life uh, for the most part, there's a great role of solitude to play in being a creative, productive individual, particularly if you're a writer like I am, or someone who uh, needs time to think and needs time to come up with these, uh, in, you know, uh, inventive ideas, whether it be in fiction or whether it be in uh, scientific creation or invention or scientific discovery. You do need time to yourself to think, and when you have a lot of people around you, it's very difficult to come up with those kind of ideas, and it's very difficult to really reflect into yourself. He talks a lot about uh, the mystics and religious leaders. You know, in every religious tradition, there is this idea of the founder, whether it's Jesus or Muhammad or anyone like that, or the Buddha, they go away for a long time. They spend a long time in the wilderness by themselves, contemplating the mysteries of life, and then they come back and they share their wisdom with other people. So he thinks that there is something to that idea of being alone and having quiet time to reflect or be a part of nature as playing an immense role in being a creative and fulfilled individual. He also talks about the role of work in fulfillment. You don't just get fulfillment from your relationships, you get fulfillment from your work that you do, whatever that may be that you've chosen to do, particularly if it's some kind of creative and personal work. You can really find happiness and joy in what you're doing and what you're contributing to the world as opposed to just the people that you're around. So I thought it was a fascinating book. Um, it talks, it does delve a little bit into kind of um, the jargon of psychoanalysis. The author is a psychiatrist and he talks about Freud and Jung a lot, uh, but it's fairly easy to read for the general public. And I thought it was really interesting. So I would recommend, if you're like me, if you're kind of a solitary person, if you like to spend time alone, if you're an introvert, then maybe check out Solitude, A Return to the Self by Anthony Storr, and you won't feel like such a weirdo anymore. Thanks for watching, everybody. I've been Logan Albright, and I'll catch you next time with another book review.